thank you. So I could get used to that. I need to have Richard uh, every time here now. And I'm actually totally excited to see so many of you sit still sitting here. I hope you're here to see me and not because it's so cozy. Um, I have the very nice job to tell you a little bit about tech. So I thought, let's start with a little bit of tech. Oh, you should see your faces here. <laughs> very excited, I can see that. So I was wondering when Felix asked me, uh, if I could do a little bit of a tech talk, I was wondering what, what is it, what can I tell you in 20 minutes? So, and the good news is it won't be this. Um, the bad news is actually that there is no way that you can learn in 20 minutes everything with what is important. So actually the most important thing for you, oh, will this work? Hello, yes, is this guy? And that's hopefully your next CDO. So, the biggest message I have for you, or the most important message, please don't try to do it yourself. Get yourself a CDO, whom you trust. Second important. Um, unfortunately, life as an entrepreneur is not always like we would wish it should be. So there might be circumstances so you don't find a proper CTO, or you might have um, not the proper funding to to pay for the CDO, they're ridiculously expensive, I know. I am one of these guys. Um, so, <laughs> roughly once a month, an entrepreneur is coming to me and asking me, Ross, um, we need an MVP. Can you do us an MVP? Because you know, I, I, need, to, I, I need to show traction with my product, we need an MVP very fast, I need to to see that the numbers work and then I get, can get the funding and everything is going to be awesome. But we don't have so much money, so maybe 20, 30K, uh, this is what we saved. So, and usually I'm telling them, no, it's not a good idea. Because it would be tempting, I know that you guys think, hey, I have an awesome idea. I wanna, I, wanna, I wanna just have an MVP and then later I can get uh, the money and I can get the team. But there are a couple of things who are really bad about this. Actually, the most important, when you outsource your MVP to an agency or offshoring, it doesn't matter. You have a massive vendor login. So what does, what does it mean? It's quite easy. They will make you a very nice offer, you will like it, but if when you have an MVP out there, that's not it. You just can't change your service provider easily. You need to have um, the capability to make a lot of changes. And once you ask for changes, I have seen it happening so many times that actually you, these guys increase the prices and suddenly you're there and like, shit. No, I have my MVP, but it's worth nothing because I just can't continue to work with it. Second, um, now you have an MVP. What do you learn? Nothing. Because your life, and that's it. What is it? Guys, we are entrepreneurs. We actually want to try things. So you have a product life. You need to see what you do your people, uh, your customers do, what do they like, what they don't like, you change the website, you work on it, you do a lot of things, and all these changes you need to communicate with your service provider. That will A, make a huge delay, and B, it's actually expensive. Yeah? Last but not least, intellectual property. So you're going to think that hey, I have a contract, I own all the intellectual property. Yes, you do, if you're smart. And I assume you're all smart. However, the bad thing about this is you don't know, own the people who code your stuff. So what happened is that you, have, you need the people to code the product to continue to work on it. And they are in some external company. You have no influence on them. And the external company can do whatever they want. So that's actually quite bad. And um, the worst thing is that you can't take these people into your company. So 
when, when they have, when you want changes, you need to get, give the source code to someone else. And then I know some of you will have coders and developers and engineers, and you know engineers hate to work on source code from somebody else. And then don't forget, it's an MVP, and you didn't pay much money for it. So most likely, it's a hack. It's a mess. So actually, what will happen is you need to stay with that service provider for a long, long, long time, and it will be very bad, painful. So don't do it, please. And I'm pretty sure many of you have done it, and I'm pretty sure you think, OK, Lars is telling me this, but I still need my MVP. I don't have a different chance, and you're still going to do it. But you will rem remember once in your lifetime, you will think like, OK, this is what Lars was talking about. So when I told you that I won't talk much about code, that was a lie. I will talk a little bit about code, because actually, if I can give you one message, please at least understand a little bit of development. I know, no, all you business guys, you will never be a really good developer. Don't worry, you won't. But it's very important that you understand the principles. So instead of giving 30,000 euros to some service provider, invest them in yourself. Learn a little bit. Understand, understand tech. Nobody expects that you code the MVP. But if you understand the basics, you can talk to the engineers on the same level. And that's very, very important. They will um, actually honor that, because they will know, OK, this guy knows a little bit, not much, but at least he tried. So that's really cool. And you will also realize much easier if they want to weasel out and don't like what they do. So that's quite important. OK, now, let's talk about the team. So you, you still think, OK, I want to have my in-house team. I want to have really good engineers. But how? How do you get them? Well, you just got funded. You got these 20 million euros. It's quite easy. You can pay a lot of money. Yeah? You just pay headhunters and get, pay a lot of money. Bad news is not a good idea. Why? First of all, most important, the people you hire over money, somebody else can hire also from you over money because they are not loyal. They only follow the money. And the bad news also, number two, is there are always people out there who actually pay more than you. So when you buy someone, the risk is very high to lose these people. The most important thing is actually culture. You need to do a nice culture. And oh, these are my guys. It's not a stock photo. These are developers working for me, the, my minions. And <laughs> they actually, what you need to do is you need to create a culture where engineers appreciate working for you, where engineers are happy and know they feel comfortable. And then you attract them. You attract engineers. That's the way. You're not hunting engineers. You're attracting them by making your company attractive to our engineers. And this is from your mindset. Most important thing, environment. Nice office. You all have seen this Google office. This is our office. And yes, there is a football table. Yes, there is some food. But the biggest thing is that you actually have something that you care that you care about engineers. There are so many people out there who think, oh yeah, tech, tech. Well, tech is not so important. I just hire some people and that's it. Yes, actually it's true. If you have a good engineering team, the bad news is it will not guarantee that you will be successful with your startup. Not at all. There are much more important things. Sales, marketing, your KPIs, biz, dev, the team, all more important. But there's one thing for sure. If your tech sucks, you will fail. It doesn't work the other way around. So please make sure that your engineers are happy. Give them a nice workspace. Nerds love their tools. If they want three monitors, give them three monitors. If they want four monitors, give them four monitors. 
We're talking about 500 euros, 1,000 euros, who cares? This is nothing compared to what you pay when you lose someone and you need to hire someone else. And don't underestimate, if you give them something like that, they will take a picture, they will Twitter, they will Instagram it, and it's like, this is so awesome, this is the best place I can work. And their friends will like, oh, you have two monitors, three monitors, I only have one. Can I, do they need people? And this is exactly what you want. You might think this is funny, but this is true. Engineers are, <laughs> you can, you just buy them with monitors and CPUs. <laughs> it works very well. <laughs> you know who this is, this is you. You, you, you. Uh, I've seen a really nice talk recently about a guy um, uh, who actually, uh, <clears throat> there was the CEO and he actually used the slide by, by actually presenting what he did. They were late and what did they do? They put pressure, 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 pressure. Yeah? And increasing the pressure and actually the bad news is also, and I'm telling you a lot of bad news today, you, see, you realize that the bad news also, it doesn't work. It works sometime, but if you increase and put a lot of pressure on the people, they, they, they are not really comfortable. So if your project is late, increasing the pressure might work in the short term, but not in the long term. And you want to keep the people and hire people in the long term. So four important things I want to give you. First of all, you need to understand code aging and refactoring. And no, I won't explain now refactoring and code aging. I only have 20 minutes and I think I'm already late. So this is, please read it up and understand what it is and why it's important. It will bite you in your back if you don't do that. Second, trust your team and make them responsible. If you give them responsibility, they will put their heart into their product and they will love it. Yeah? But you need to trust them. Trust them a little bit. And tell them, okay, if you think you want to do it like this, do it like this, as long as it's work and you guarantee that for me. Third, you need to understand agile development. Everybody's talking about agile and yes, or no, I'm not explaining Agile now, don't worry, you have all should have heard about it before. But Agile doesn't mean that your tech team is Agile and you are not. You need to understand your role and you need to fill that role and you're part of a true Agile team. And last but not least, think twice before asking for features and that is the most important thing. I've seen it every fucking week. Managers asking for something, we need that, it's so important. Come, 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 give me that. Come on, guys, work, work, work. And then after a week, they say like, oh, everything is uh, changing, we don't need that. Uh, we need something different. And the next week, you do something else, and you do something else, and you just do this three, four times, and your team won't take you serious anymore. They will think, this guy's nuts. He's always shouting, he's demanding things, but he's not actually um, uh, using it. He's changing his mind. Let me try this. How would you like if your investors would call you once a week and tell you that the business plan has changed? Just think a second how you would feel. You would go completely crazy. And this is exactly what you do with your engineers. But please don't do this. A little bit of tech, just a little bit. Um, I was thinking, okay, what can I do? What is important for you? I have a lot of contact with uh, entrepreneurs and founders who tell me, oh, we are using this technology, that technology, but we don't get enough people. Can you help me? The most important thing is when you actually, uh, when your CDO is asking you if they can use this technology or that programming language or something, you need to ask yourself, can I get enough engineers for that? And let me give you a small example. That is the Hello World Open is the world championship in coding. And that world championship is quite huge. And here you see the ranking of programming languages developers use for that championship. So you can clearly see that Java and Python are number one. Then we have JavaScript, a couple of C dialects, Ruby, Clojure, Scala, Haskell, Go, and only a little bit of PHP. Um, 
The interesting thing is, if we look to Germany, it looks a little bit different. You see Java Python still number one, but suddenly there's Scala number three. Scala is quite popular under the cool entrepreneurs in Germany. And in the US, suddenly Python number one. And that is really interesting because you need to understand that there is a local, um, well, how to, how to say, there is, a, there, there is a, that, that code, uh, programming languages are, are local and there are local fashion also among developer. So it's uh, quite clearly that uh, Python is more popular in the US than in Germany. Yes, oh, surprise, we all know that. However, that was the, the, the coding language, um, the Hello World, the programming uh, world championship, but the reality is a little bit different. There is an interesting uh, statistic popularity of programming languages, and this is what developers really use. Because in the world championship, they use what they want not what they work every day. And you see suddenly, hello, Java, yes, it's very important, PHP is number two. Developers don't like PHP, but they work worldwide every day with it. Then there's Python, all the Cs, MATLAB and R, some fancy statistical stuff. There is no Scala, no Clojure, no Haskell, not really. In Germany, it looks pretty much the same, Python, C++, and PHP. And the same, and oh, by the way, you can clearly see the red one is the, the year before that Swift is uh, gaining traction, Java, uh, and Objective-C is losing, but that's just as a side note. So what can we learn? Java, NEC dialect, and PHP seem to be the best choice. PHP not in the US, don't do it. Um, second best is Python and JavaScript. Ruby, I didn't talk about that, but actually Ruby is losing a lot of traction. They lost 30% market share because Ruby is so fancy and all the early adopters who did Ruby in the past, they do now Clojure and Haskell and all the, the cool stuff. And everything else strongly depends on the country where you are. So you need to understand where are you and which to, to understand which programming language you should use. Every one of you can get two, three developers in any language, but if you want 20 or 30, you will be in trouble if you make the wrong choice. So ask your head of tech, can you guarantee me that I get 20 developers for that language? And if he nods, then you can go ahead. And you see, I like the word but. Now we're talking about one program language. Unfortunately, the one trick pony is that. Yes, I, I killed it. In the past, 20 years ago, people were doing like, oh, we do C++, we do Java, we do PHP. Unfortunately, the world nowadays is a little bit different. Nowadays, you do Java and PHP, Python, Ruby, HTML, JavaScript, Node.js. I'm pretty sure I forgot a couple of things. So you do a lot of technology. So all there's actually no what, not a single big website on earth who doesn't consist of 10, 15, 20 different programming languages. I'm not talking about tools. They use different databases, MongoDB, Cassandra, Memcache, blah, 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 all this. I'm not talking even about that. So that means actually that learning is very important. So you need to give your developers a little bit of slack to learn new stuff. You need to to need to give them a little bit of time so that they can educate. Okay, I can see I'm a little bit slow. I can shout louder, or I can sing, actually. <laughs> but I'm, I'm done, okay, okay. So last but not least, the attitude, very important. So the attitude for learning. And now the, the couple of values you need, please, to take away is actually learn to code at least a little bit. You all go home now. Download a, a tool and code. Yes, I know this is what you wanted to do. Tonight. Awesome, huh? Check the availability of engineers before you agree to your CTO. Don't just think in tech. It might be a good tech decision, but you need to check availability of people. Engineers are rare everywhere on Earth. Give the team headroom for refactoring and learning. Very important. Very important, because actually there are everyday new technologies. For example, right now, if you're in mobile, there's React Native 
uh, pretty cool. It just came out a couple of weeks ago. It's new, it's, it's hot, it's really, it might be the next big thing, but you will not find anyone who can do it. You need to give your engineers time to look into it. And do not waste the time of engineers, most important. Please, if you only take one thing away from now, do not waste the time of your engineers. You make them very, very unhappy. Nobody's expecting from you three months planning but two weeks would be cool. If you don't change your mind three times in two weeks, we would be very happy. Thank you.